All right, let me ask you a question. What am I currently dressed up as? If you said Scout, sweet, thumbs up, you are totally correct. But if you said Fem Scout, we need to have a conversation. So it should be no surprise that I am a woman. I know I don't talk about it very frequently, but it shouldn't be a shock to anyone. I know my voice can sometimes tread the fine line of a woman and a 12-year-old prepubescent boy. Plus, uh, being more muscular than your average woman doesn't exactly help. Just because I don't have a high-pitched female voice uh, doesn't exactly mean my age automatically regresses back by 14 years and I've swapped genders. I'm still a woman. I'm just not conventionally dressed like one right now. Because this is a costume. And it's not a woman's costume. I'm clearly dressed as the Scout. Mr. Fast-talking, baseball-loving Bostonian boy. But for some reason, there are countless people who won't say, Cool Scout costume. They'll say, Cool Femme Scout costume. Why? Well, I think the answer is relatively simple. TF2 has always and consistently had a prominence of gender-bent characters throughout the community. Rule 63, the mercenaries, has existed for almost as long as the game has been around at this point. As far as I can tell, the first proper community design for a female merc can be traced back to 2009 with, I am going to butcher this horribly, a... <laughs> A yes yes A A yes yes A yes yes Fem Scout model mod. Uh, this base design of this model would become infamous for uh, reasons, but the main thing here is that Fem Scout was sort of the launching point of the gender bending of mercenaries and characters throughout the TF2 franchise. This was well before we were made aware of the officially designed female mercenaries that never made it out of the pitch process. Designed by Drew Wolf, these ladies were revealed in 2017 on his blog, so they don't really have much to do with the community going hog wild with female merc designs years before these were even brought to the surface. Hell, I'll even admit to using the old female heavy and engineer mods way back in my early days of playing TF2. Pivoting back to my original rant, there are a lot of people that equate someone's cosplay to their gender, as opposed to the character's gender. And this is something that I've seen to be pretty prominent within TF2 in particular. Anytime I've done a male character outside of TF2, I've never really been referred to as a female version of that character. Ever. This is a normal scout costume. I am a normal, boring ass scout. Just because I am a woman does not mean I am dressed as a femme scout. This is a femme scout. This is a scout costume that has been translated into a feminine style. Not this, but this. I think the differences are pretty clear. But, because I am a woman, a lot of people automatically think I'm dressing up as a female version of a mercenary, regardless of the outfit. That is not how that works. The female designs aren't simply women that are slapped into the male version's outfits. They are designs specifically crafted to take advantage of it not only being a character with a different gender, but sometimes a different character altogether. I'll actually go back to Drew Wolf's design, as a majority of these are completely different people from the mercenaries we know. Like, if you're telling me that this demo is the same as our demo, Tavish de Groot, However, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that the popular community designs for the female mercenaries are meant to be full-on gender-bent versions of the same people. But even then, they still change up their outfits to work better with their feminine ways. God, this sounds creepy as hell. 
Anyhow, it's kind of insulting to be automatically thrown into the femme version category, regardless of what I do. I know I don't really go the extra mile to wear a wig or fully mask my feminine features to really lean into the maleness of it all, but uh, by lumping me into a category because of something I literally have no control of, it's diminishing my efforts by essentially saying, you can never really cosplay this character, whether you realize that or not. I've seen this happen to female cosplayers who do everything in their power to mask their female features. Bald caps, wigs, facial hair, binders, the works. But because some people know that there is a woman underneath all of that, they still get gender bit by the community. It's insulting because it feels like no matter what a female cosplayer does in the TF2 community, we will never live up to some people's impossible expectations. If you automatically categorize us into gender bent versions of the characters we are cosplaying simply because of our genders and not the actual costume itself, you are part of a very small frustrating problem. And let me make it clear, there's absolutely nothing wrong with gender bending a character's costume. It's been done for decades and it's a natural part of a community's curiosity. It's just not something that I personally do because I'm a weirdo that likes to go for accuracy and comfortability in the outfit, but there's some parts of accuracy that are impossible to achieve. Like, no, I can't just grow a dick and become a white dude from Boston. Sorry, but nature has its limitations. And let's talk about impossible standards for a second. I've received my fair share of comments scrutinizing my costumes, particularly those used in my videos. I've had people go so far as to call out not having two dog tags on my scout. Something I absolutely did have, but they just slid behind each other during filming and weren't the most visible. They're also the official scout dog tag, so um, yeah. There have also been comments about not having scout's backpack. A choice I made so I could have full range of motion during filming. Or not having Medic's backpack, which, might I add, is a very different beast to put together than simply buying a black duffel bag. But you know what? I now have one! So you can go suck a fat c Okay, I'm good. I'm back to nice, decently calm, and normal. So, I'm sort of a weird cosplayer. I touched on this in my first video about how amazing TF2 cosplaying is, uh, but I'm really, really bad at the role-playing aspect of cosplaying. I don't really do it. I just like the costumes and dressing up as a character. Uh, but even then, I pretty much never use wigs or makeup to transform myself. It's not so much out of laziness as it is comfortability. I just don't like either. I don't like the physical feeling of makeup and trying to cram my thick hair into a wig that has to be maintained is always a chore. But because I know I generally won't do these things, I tend to choose characters where they aren't required. You'll probably never see me dressed up as an anime character for that reason. Like, 95% of those characters' identities come from their logic-defying hairstyles. Because I often forego these aspects, the only thing I have to transform myself is my costume. And this goes back to my first video where I talked about why anyone can do the mercs. They're all about the outfits. But I think, even if I did use these techniques, to mask what little femininity, femin it's like an anemone <laughs> that I have, I'd still be labeled as a female version simply because of, wait. Imagine I am gesturing to my chest simply because of these. Yeah, you, they're, they're, not, they're not there that much, but you see them? Yeah, cool, That because of that, mm-hmm. All right, so we know the deal. You can't talk about being a woman without touching on 
harassment. It's just the way things are. Stinky boys don't want our cooties cootying up their sausage fest of a game. Now, in this day and age, uh, there needs to be a separation of online interactions and real life interactions. And there is definitely a big distinction between what people experience between the two scenarios. It's pretty obvious as to why, but when someone is standing in front of you, staring at your face, they tend to bite their tongue and not say the same sort of things they would say if there was a screen separating them. People tend to chicken out on being a jerk when in person, so inherently you don't receive as many toxic comments from people in real life. But you know what I have received? Being called the femme class. Yep, I have gotten that several times over the years in real life. And I know they don't mean anything malicious by it, mainly because they aren't aware that it is an irksome comment, but it doesn't mean it doesn't touch a nerve of mine when I hear it. Most of the jerktacular or sexualized comments I've gotten are from online interactions and posts. And that shouldn't be a surprise. While I don't get that many sexualized comments since I I don't exactly exude sexiness in uh, most of my costumes. I think the most consistently irritating comments I've gotten when cosplaying is actually whenever I do Korra from Avatar. I cannot tell you the amount of times I've heard, oh, cool cosplay, but Korra sucks. And then getting a whole essay on why Korra is the worst Avatar. I shouldn't have to say it, but don't do that? Don't shit on the character someone is cosplaying as to their face? Unless they're the ones to initialize the dunking conversation. Anyhow, let's jump back on track here. Outside of the specific costumes, I have gotten some odd comments online. Like, for example, I've gotten more comments than I'd like, either asking if I'm trans or accusing me of being trans. Just because I am a woman that doesn't wear makeup, has a body type that is considered untraditionally woman, has more muscles than your average female, and a voice that doesn't pierce the heavens with its pitch, uh, doesn't mean they're trans. <laughs> I shouldn't even be having this conversation. Nor should I feel like the need to try and prove this? But do you want some like safe for work proof? Do, do I really need to prove this? I live in the Bible Belt of America. I went to school in a very conservative area. I was on the swim team in high school for four years competing in the women's races because I am a cis woman. If I was not, I would have been completely barred from the sport. Okay, we need to move on to this tangent don't transvestigate, it's dumb, it's stupid. Don't do it. When it comes to true cosplay harassment, I don't think I'm a normal case. Uh, this could potentially be for a few reasons that I'm going to stress should not be taken the wrong way. I am simply inferring things about the experiences I've had based on how I present myself, my costumes, and my reputation. I am almost completely missing the unwanted sexualization. Sure, I've gotten a few online awooga comments, uh, but many of those can be taken as jokes as opposed to actual advances. This one is hilarious to me though. I don't exactly exude sexual energy. I probably don't even come off as attractive to many, and my costumes definitely don't help that. Look, I know I don't have the conventionally attractive aspects of a woman. I've got a friggin' swimmer's body, broad shoulders and small hips, but I own up to it. Now, this can come off very poorly, so please understand I am not accusing anyone of anything. This is just my personal introspective hypothesis as to why I've never really experienced this harassment. But, I don't wear any sexualized costumes. 
And in the case of this video, I don't rule 63 any of them. It's just not my thing. I don't like tight and revealing clothing. It makes me personally uncomfortable. Genuinely, if you saw me walking around in my everyday life, you'd either catch me in exercise clothing or a t-shirt and jeans. In terms of DF2, what this means is that I do not cosplay the Femme Marks. All of my costumes tend to go for the original designs. Boring, I know, but it's what I enjoy doing. The unfortunate fact of the matter is that being in a more feminine costume opens you up for unwanted advancements and harassment, more so than wearing clothing that is clearly male and keeps you covered up. Hilariously, the most revealing costume I've ever done is Saxton Hale and his booty shorts, the manliest man in TF2. Another reason I think I don't receive a huge amount of harassment is that I do have a reputation in the TF2 community. It's not huge, but it's not small either. Uh, like my content, my reputation is solidly mediocre. But I am sort of a public figure within the community, and that might deter people from harassing me to some extent. Outside of the TF2 community though, when I go out to events and cons, I'm generally never alone. Not being alone also likely deters people from being dicks or creepy. The one time I went to a convention alone, I did get an uncomfortable interaction with someone. I was dressed up like the 11th doctor from Doctor Who, and some guy came up to me and started chatting me up, asking about the show. Out of nowhere, he just asks, would you date a guy who wore drag? This part of the video isn't to say that I haven't received my fair share of harassment over the years. I think anyone who has an online presence has experienced it at some point in their life. But I'm trying to explain why I don't feel like I can talk about it in length about this unfortunate byproduct of simply existing as a woman in a predominantly male community. My experiences aren't enough. So I decided to outsource. Hi, I'm Lee, also known as The Unusual Lee. Uh, I first cosplayed TF2 back in 2013, where I made my first ever cosplay, which was actually the Blue Femme Sniper. And then I went on to make Miss Pauling's expiration date outfit, which was actually brand new at the time. Then I made a crossover tracer scout thing about a year into Overwatch's existence. And then I didn't actually really play TF2 again until I got back into it during 2020, during lockdown. Um, and then about a year later after that, I was like, wouldn't it be like really cute if I did like a 10 year anniversary of my first ever cosplay? So I actually remade uh, my Femme Sniper cosplay in 2022, but this time it was a red version and uh, it kind of quickly spiraled into becoming my favourite cosplay that I've ever worn. Um, <laughs> I've kind of worn it about, god, 10 plus times at this point? Then. Last year, I went on to make my Uncle Dane inspired engineer cosplay, which, although I like more from like an accuracy point of view, it's less rewear friendly because of the uh, intensity of the makeup. Have you done femme mercs? If so, what are some reactions people have had to them? Give me the good and bad. When I made my femme sniper in 2022, it was very heavily inspired by the uh, popular fan made femme sniper model. Uh, but I did kind of like, I did add a few like of my own touches to it. The reaction I had last year to it was pretty positive. Um, a lot of my Twitter followers kind of came from like a meme -y picture I took of it in a like Valve fixed TF2 shirt at a convention after party. However, there has been some body shaming comments online that kind of came with the attention that I got from that cosplay. But I'd kind of chalk that up to more like internet anonymity rather than like the TF2 community itself. Uh, IRL there's been like so much positive feedback especially at like the massive TF2 cosplay meets we have in the UK at the minute. Um, <laughs> especially to my big old Australian sniper rifle which uh, I have on my wall now, it's my favourite thing I've ever made. <laughs> have you done non-gender bent cosplays, i.e. normal scout and sniper? What did you do for these? And have you been called femme class when in these costumes? If so, how does that make you feel? 
when I made my Uncle Dane cosplay, I did go into it specifically with the goal of it being like a very try-hard cosplay, like no detail spared, I wanted to be bald, I wanted the beard, I wanted like every detail just spot on. Like I even like hand embroidered like all of the engineer's pocket details in it, that was like how over the top I went with it. It's a bit of an inside joke among my friends that like even with all the obvious effort of like gluing the beard to my face, putting on like the latex ball cap every time and like binding every time I wear it, that they still get referred to as like a female, <laughs> like a female Uncle Dane cosplay. It's nothing I can't really like laugh off because it's a bit silly that someone can see the hours of effort I spend doing the makeup and still think it's a feminine cosplay. It can be like a little bit invalidating, I guess, is probably the best word. Because it's like, by saying that it's a feminine cosplay, it's like saying I didn't quite hit the mark with it. Or like, hit what I was aiming for. Have you received harassment or sexualized comments before? If so, were they on the femme class costumes and or the normal costumes? Yeah, I can't say I've ever been like, sexualized in the Uncle Dane cosplay, I think. The only time people ever made like joking comments was when I did like the makeup test and I wore like a proper like e-girl outfit with it because I thought it was funny. Um, but I've had a, like a few comments when I've cosplayed Femme Sniper and it's always like very strange to me because I don't think my Femme Sniper is like a particularly like sexual cosplay. Um, but I feel like it's just a problem that really happens to like Femme presenting cosplays specifically especially in comparison to male ones. Um, the bulk of cosplays that I actually do are like male cosplays and I don't receive those kinds of comments on them really. <laughs> One thing I like with TF2 cosplay compared to other parts of cosplay is that it, for starters it's the only cosplay I feel comfortable using my own hair for because I don't know why I feel like when you cosplay a, like your own merc from TF2 you kind of want to put your own like pers like self into it you know? And I, I don't know why, like, not wearing a wig for it, like, does that for me. But it's definitely, like, makes it super comfortable and definitely, like, is part of the reason I've worn that cosplay so many times. When I made my sniper, the main reason I used the crop vest from the femme sniper model was because I thought it, like, complemented my body shape more. But I definitely say there's, like, no boundary when you're cosplaying, like, a female version of the TF2 mercs. Like, you can go off of, like, the concept designs, you can, like, make your own ones. I've seen, like, so many cool, like, fan arts of, like, people's own interpretation of the femme mercs. And, like, everyone does it a different way. Personally, my favourite is when people draw off, like, all the femme mercs and then pyro is just pyro. Because, of course, of course they are. Like, you can really just kind of go crazy with it. Um, at some point, I really want to cosplay a femme medic. Um, and I'd love to make the lab coat into kind of like a dress almost. Um, that'd be definitely fun to play around with. See ya! I'd like to take what little time I have left with you guys trapped here to stress the fact that the issue regarding the labeling of femme class isn't necessarily exclusive to women. Any person, no matter their gender, if they are perceived as being female presenting regardless of intent, is fairly likely to be automatically labeled as a femme class. And hell, the same can be said for any guys who dress up as a female character. But there's something specific about TF2 cosplay that just causes people to have to label opposite genders. I genuinely don't understand why people feel the need to put cosplays into very specific boxes that the cosplayers themselves either don't put themselves into or are actively trying to stay out of. And trust me, I know there's some irony calling that out considering the past 24 minutes to some people probably sounded like, I am a woman, stop labeling me as a femme scout. Which would still inherently be a label. But it's because I just want to make people aware of the irritation that exists when placing people into categories they are not intentionally trying to be in. When I personally do any costume, 
I am dressing up as that character. My own personal gender shouldn't come into consideration when doing male characters. That doesn't mean refer to me as a guy. Just don't call me a femme class due to something I have zero control over. When I'm dressed up as Cora or Miss Pauling, I'm dressed up as a female character. When I'm dressed up as a scout or a medic, I'm dressed up as a male character. I'm not dressed up as a female scout or female medic. Now, something I should mention is that sometimes it's not the most obvious what someone's intentions with their costume is. Sometimes someone intending to be a genderbend version of that character still leans pretty heavy into the original outfit. And I get it. Because of this, I can see why people do label me Femscout. Because the line can be easily blurred. However, 10 years of hearing comments like this does kinda get to you. So, yeah, this video exists for a reason. But remember, this has just been me sharing my own opinion and feelings on the subject matter. Some people may not feel this way, so it's always best to simply ask. If you see a cosplayer, you should either just ask them what their costume is, regardless of if you recognize it, or just say, Nice, insert non-gendered character name here! Like, Nice Scout. Not Nice Femme Scout. Not Nice Female Scout. And Not Nice Girl Scout. Oh, and before I end this video, don't be an asshole. Ah, jeez, it's been a while since I did this. A special thanks to Trey Window for still supporting me at my highest tier, despite the fact I'm horribly inconsistent with uploads. And a cool thank you to Moeke Kiryu, Shano Mahoney, Julian Arnott, and Jorge Aisha.